The new Health Professions Building will have its ribbon cutting ceremony tomorrow. We'll give you a full look inside the new campus edition. This semester, Ball State has partnered with WTHR in Indianapolis to cover the Heartland International Film Festival. We'll show you where you can find all of that content later. And I'm tracking a beautiful weekend ahead, but with rain chances to fall. All of the details coming up. From the heart of Ball State University, live from the Unified Media Newsroom, NewsLink Indiana starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being with us. I'm Liz Sapchak. And I'm Destiny Johnson. Our top story tonight, the Ball State Health Professions Building will host its ribbon cutting ceremony tomorrow. Newsing Indiana's Annie Keister is live at the building with more. Annie. Yeah, Liz and Destiny, this building opened just before the start of the semester, yet its impact on student learning is already huge. Students and real-world experience, a mix becoming a bigger reality, Ball State medical students are met with many new opportunities, all thanks to their new facility. So what are you in here for today? The $87.5 million building holds simulation rooms like this one, allowing health students to get a little more hands-on. Today, I was a part of that experience firsthand. But people aren't the only thing being practiced on in the new building. The one-year-old is new. Yes, dummies, they're a huge addition to the new facility. Learn skills, practice skills um, before they go out into the clinical setting and practice those on real life people. The students work closely with the dummies, even naming them. This dummy is Martha. Dummies like Martha allow them to simulate complications, such as post-operative bleeding and infection. Dummies, cameras, and new medical equipment are all just a part of what technology is doing for the programs. Open to the Muncie community, the building features four new clinics. Every first and second year, um, IU School of Medicine student rotates through um, that center as well. It's, it's really an educational center, so we have patients coming in that are just looking to live a healthier lifestyle. All these resources rounding out the program to what it should be. Now, the ribbon cutting will be here at the Riverside entrance at 3 p.m. tomorrow. For now, live in the Health Professions Building, Annie Keister, NewsLink, Indiana. Back to you guys at the desk. And the Health Professions Building isn't the only new addition on campus. As Ball State prepares to cut the ribbon for the new health building, construction on a new multicultural center is about to begin. The groundbreaking ceremony for the new building will take place this Saturday at 11 in the morning. At the ceremony, the $4 million design for the new building will be revealed. The new multicultural center is meant to improve diversity, inclusion, and assist students with disabilities. The Ball State says that it will also allow to make the campus friendlier and more connected. Homecoming is in full swing on campus and events will continue to uh, get you started throughout the weekend. Homecoming now is going on, uh, Air Jam is going on in Emmons Auditorium. Tomorrow, students will gather for the bed race on Riverside Avenue. On Saturday, the Chase Charlie 5K starts at 845 in the morning and the parade will then get underway at 9 o'clock. Then just a few hours later, your Ball State Cardinals take on the Toledo Rockets. The game begins at 2 o'clock at Schumann Stadium. Ball State Unified Media is your homecoming headquarters. Tomorrow we get you started uh, for homecoming. Join our sister show Waking Up with Cardinal Weather tomorrow morning live from Schumann Stadium as they get you ready for the weekend of festivities. Plus organizations from across campus go head to head in the 2019 homecoming bed race. We'll have a special report tomorrow at noon from the event on Riverside Avenue. And hopefully the weather is going to hold up for that. Yes, hopefully. I'm so excited. I know today was a little bit cold, but hopefully Stephen has some good news for us. Yeah, Stephen, what you got? Well, Liz and Destiny, I have a treat for you guys. It will be nice, and we'll go more into that later in the show. But right now, temperatures are starting to cool off across the state. 43 in Shelbyville, 47 in Fort Wayne, 45 in Kokomo. And on Ball State's campus, it's 45 with clear skies. Light and northerly wind at 6 miles per hour, but it's making it feel like 42. So if you're heading out tonight, make sure to have a warm layer or two if you're heading out for any study sessions or such and such. But current radar, some clouds were moving through the area in the last couple of hours. But coming up on my full forecast, I am tracking a beautiful weekend for homecoming weekend. But rain chances are to fall. I'll have the details coming later in my full forecast. A worldwide event took place today and a Muncie, Muncie High School chose to participate. Madison Surface has more with the story. Drop, cover, and hold on. 
That's the name of a worldwide movement to practice earthquake drills on October 17th each year. This morning, Burris Laboratory School took part at 1017. So it's the same thing with all these types of drills, keeping it in, in people's um, you know, muscle memory and they're almost more of a reflexive type of a thing instead of thinking, oh wait, what happens now? Where do I go? What's supposed to occur? This national practice was created by the Great Shakeout Earthquake Movement. Over 300,000 K-12 through schools participated in Indiana, along with over 130,000 colleges and universities. Muncie Burris decided to combine the earthquake drill with an evacuation as a way to also practice fire drills. We have fire drills on a monthly basis, um, as required by the state. Um, we do have different um, other types of drills, catastrophes, um, man-made or weather-related or otherwise. This was the second year the Burris Laboratory School was a part of the movement, and they do plan to continue in the coming years. In Muncie, Madison Surface, Newslink, Indiana. To learn more about the great ShakeOut, you can visit shakeout.org. Heartland International Film Festival is underway in Indianapolis. Later tonight, we'll tell you where you can find exclusive content from the event. And Joel is taking a big step today to combat the teen vaping crisis, the products you won't be seeing on the shelves anymore. Next. Riding the bus is an easy thing to do. Last year, we carried 60,000 riders from the Ball State area. 50,000 of those were students. Anywhere you want to go, Mitz will take you there. So, I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Juul, the lead e-cigarette company in the U.S., is halting sales of popular flavors among vape users. Mango, cream, fruit, and cucumber flavors have been removed from online stores. The only flavors that will remain for sale in retail shops are tobacco, mint, and menthol. Flavored pods will continue to be sold outside of the U.S. Juul has also announced that the company is suspending all broadcast, print, and digital products advertising in the U.S. Congress is mourning the loss of Maryland Congressman Elijah Cummings today. Cummings served Maryland's 7th District, which includes the city of Baltimore. Karen Kaifa has reaction from Capitol Hill. You, uh, Capitol Hill Speaker. in mourning. We have lost uh, a great American. Democrat Elijah Cummings, representative of the 7th Congressional District of Maryland since 1996, chairman of the House Oversight Committee, civil rights advocate, and fierce champion of his native Baltimore, died early Thursday morning, his office said, at the age of 68, the result of longstanding health Thank challenges. Very it's very sad, very sad for all of us. We've all lost a friend. I'm devastated by the loss. Fellow Maryland Democrat Jamie Raskin, also a member of the Oversight Committee, said that Cummings' legacy will loom large, especially as Democrats continue their impeachment inquiry. What Elijah gave us was this moral resonance and texture to everything 
that we did. The tributes also coming from Republicans like Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina. He was a good man. If you disagreed with him, that was okay because he would help you where he could. I think he represented sort of the, the best of what a congressman uh, is like. And two of President Trump's staunchest defenders in the House. Cummings had a close friendship with Congressman Mark Meadows of North Carolina, who said Thursday he is heartbroken. And Jim Jordan of Ohio, the top Republican on the Oversight Committee, mourned Cummings as a man of great consequence and significance. Flags at the White House and the Capitol were lowered to half staff Thursday morning. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. Congressman Cummings was one of the lead advocates for the impeachment inquiry of President Trump. He led the House Oversight Committee as part of that fight. A White House brief press briefing today held uh, appears to reveal a quid pro quo between President Trump and Ukraine. The president has previously denied that any favors were exchanged between him and the Ukrainian president. These alleged favors are what led House Democrats to open an impeachment inquiry into the president. Acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney says an investigation into the 2016 DNC server was related to the holdup of American aid money to Ukraine. Did he also mention to me in the past that the, 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 the corruption related to the DNC server? Absolutely. No question about that. Um, but that's it. And that's why we held up the money. Later today, after the briefing, Mulvaney's office released a statement further denying any quid pro quo occurred. Energy Secretary Rick Perry has officially notified the president that he will leave the Energy Department. Yesterday, Perry told the Wall Street Journal that he did not intend to leave the administration. But today, an anonymous official confirmed that Perry told the president he intends to leave the position soon. Perry remains under scrutiny for his role in the president's dealings with Ukraine. He has yet to officially comment on how long he intends to remain with the administration. Another unexpected move between the U.S. and Turkey in northern Syria. Thursday, Vice President Mike Pence announced that he and Turkey's president have agreed to temporarily stop its military operation in the region. Today, the United States and Turkey have agreed to a ceasefire in Syria. Pence says President Trump will withdraw the sanctions placed on Turkey in the last week once a permanent ceasefire is in place. Meanwhile, Turkey's foreign minister said Thursday they may pause their aggression for 120 hours only, but clearly said it's not a ceasefire and that they will stop their operation only if their conditions were met. Heartland International Film Festival is showcasing movies from around the state, country, and world. Before your seven-day forecast, we'll give you an exclusive look at some of the coverage. And also coming up after the break, I'll have your full forecast tonight. We'll drop to down to the mid-30s for the lows. I'll have your full forecast along the Ball State Homecoming Weekend forecast after the break. For those who serve today and those who served before them, for those whose sacrifice will never end, the Gary Sinise Foundation shows its gratitude through entertainment, outreach, and life-changing support. We can never give enough, but we can always give a little more. Find out how you can donate at GarySiniseFoundation.org. Sometimes there is no do-over. Some things you can't rewind. That's when an extra safety step could mean the difference between a close call and a call to 911. Simple steps save lives. Learn more at poolsafely.gov.
all the things you've done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. Five Ball State students have had a unique opportunity to partner with WTHR Channel 13 and the Heartland International Film Festival. Yes, and one of our very own Newslink Indiana members, Marley Thomas, has <laughs> been a part of this project. Marley is here with us tonight to give us details on the experience and what do you, exactly do you have for us? So this partnership, first of all, it's between Channel 13, Ball State University, and the Heartland International Film Festival. So it's been an amazing opportunity, honestly, because with this partnership, what we do is the five Ball State students, we create the content covering the Heartland International Film Festival, and then Channel 13 uses it. So it's been, it's been a blast so far. That is <laughs> so cool. How did it feel to be a part of this experience? Like I said, it's been a blast. And honestly, I'm a senior this year, so it's been very bittersweet for me, honestly, <laughs> because it's given me a really unique opportunity to really enhance my journalism skills my senior year. Mm -hmm. And I've always been interested in entertainment reporting and broadcasting, so being able to be on the red carpet interviewing filmmakers. It was just a blessing, honestly. That's great. And also, what did you think about the filmmakers? The filmmakers were awesome. Like, I laughed the whole entire <laughs> night. They were so fun. As you can see here, we were on the red carpet interviewing multiple filmmakers from not only Indiana and around the United States, but from around the world. And I worked alongside other Ball State students. Like I said, there they are right there. We were on the red carpet getting all of those interviews. Now here's a sneak peek of the content you can see on Channel 13. Right, so my film is called We Shall Not Die Now and it chronicles the Holocaust so 1939 through 1945. Um, I interviewed survivors, liberators, scholars from all around the world, filmed at every camp in Poland including Auschwitz um, and I just went there just myself in a camera. I edited the film and then did all the music for the film. That was filmmaker Ashton Gleckman, one of the many filmmakers that we had the opportunity to interview. And if you would like to see the content that we've created, you can check out the 13 Now app on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. And as for the Heartland International Film Festival, it will continue throughout Indianapolis until Sunday. Now, Stephen, will it be a good weekend to maybe go see a movie and go see some of those films? <laughs> I gotta be honest, Marley, I got great news for all of you guys in general. It's Yay. going to be a beautiful weekend. We'll get more into that later in the <laughs> forecast. Now, today we had a bit of a warmer day, a lot more sunshine than yesterday. It was a bit gloomy yesterday, but we still have those breezy winds as well. Made for a nice day today. 49 right now in Indianapolis, 45 Kokomo, 47 in Fort Wayne. Definitely cooling off out there across the state. 45 on Ball State's campus under a clear, gorgeous sky. Winds out of the north of 6, making it feel like 42. Definitely have that jacket if you're heading out for any study sessions tonight. Uh, mainly clear on radar. We had some low-level clouds passing through over the last couple of hours, and the National Weather Service earlier today had issued a frost advisory for all of the viewing area. This is from 2 a.m to 8 a.m. Friday morning. Low temperatures around the mid 30s will potentially kill ve sensitive vegetation if not covered up. So before you head to bed tonight, be sure to cover up those plants so they can continue to live. Speaking of tonight, we continue the mostly clear chin, patchy frost possible, 36 for the low. Winds will die down out of the north northwest of Friday. Absolutely gorgeous, 60 for the high, mainly sunny. Light winds in general. It's going to make for a beautiful end to the work week. And speaking of Ball State homecoming, guys, it's right around the corner. We're going to have a great weekend. Kicking off uh, the weekend in general with the bed race is 53. This kicks off at noon, mainly sunny skies, Wednesday light. And the Chase Trolley 5K will kick off a full load of activities for Saturday. I will actually be in that race, so cheer me on if you see me. Kicks off at 8.45 a.m. Mostly sunny, a chilly 46 degrees with mostly sunny skies. The light winds out of the south southeast may make things slightly cooler, so definitely have that long sleeve shirt prepared to go for the race. And the homecoming parade following that, temperatures will be in the lower 50s, so definitely makes things for, it leads to a beautiful day, actually. By the time we get to the football game at 2 o'clock against Toledo Rockets, it's going to be 67, mostly sunny skies, so you get to ditch that warm layer, get to just enjoy a beautiful day for the football game. I hope you guys get out there and enjoy this really nice weather. Speaking of the weekend overall, the only, the only minor setback is a very low chance of a spy shower, but this is once again very low. Mainly a lot of us will stay dry. High of 70 on Saturday and Sunday. Keeping things dry, 72, mostly sunny. It's going to be a gorgeous weekend, guys. It's going to feel like 
It's the end of September in general. Now, heading to the mid seven day forecast, that warm up I was talking about will continue through Sunday and Monday is another big story as well. Monday could see maybe a strong thunderstorm in general, high as 70. I'm going to keep a 60% chance of rain. This will be in the afternoon hours and then look at the middle of the work week. We drop off back to around the 60 degree mark. Once that strong cold front passes through on Monday, guys, it's going to be back to basically what it's been today. Basically chilly with except without the winds. I'm keeping a small precip chance on Tuesday as well. So guys, other than the rain chances, a beautiful forecast indeed. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a beautiful homecoming. Colton, I'm excited for it. Yes, that's right, Liz. It's going to be a beautiful homecoming weather wise and activity wise. We have your homecoming weekend sports preview just ahead. So if one cat has four kittens who reproduce every six months, how many cats will there be in five years? Who's got it? Is this, what is that? Seriously, who threw that? Cats are terrible at math, but they sure do multiply. Please spay, neuter, and adopt. The solution is 10. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. Good evening everyone, I'm Colton Howard with sports. Homecoming is in the air and there's a lot of activities going on, but most importantly, there's a football game to be played. Saturday at 2 p.m., the Cardinals welcome in Mac Foes, the Toledo Rockets. 26 years ago on homecoming week, Ball State's head coach Mike New led the Cardinals as a player to a school record 27 point comeback win against Toledo. Fast forward the clock to this Saturday, the Cardinals now being led by a new comeback kid. Drew Plitt and the Cardinals have come from behind in the second half the past two weeks. The Cardinals scored 24 straight to overcome a 14-point deficit at Northern Illinois and rattled off 15 in a row to come from nine down at Eastern Michigan. Even crazier, BSU enters the homecoming matchup with Toledo boasting a 2-0 record in MAC play with a pair of road wins, just like Mike News' 1993 team did. News Link Indiana's Tyler Ryan caught up with the Cardinals QB Drew Plitt to hear his thoughts heading into the weekend. We've done a great job of just being road warriors, um, you know, playing in front of a lot of away crowds that kind of boo us, obviously, when we come out on the field. But um, for us, it's just our, it's our own game that we've focused on us and been ourselves. You guys are staying hot. How are you going to be able to stay hot going into uh, this game on Saturday? For us, it's just, you know, taking back and forgetting about the last two games, um, going into each week. Uh, we have a one and one mentality. Uh, we come in each week and kind of forget what, what we did. Uh, we enjoyed it, but we moved on. We're, we're back in the film room, back in the practice room, getting better. You can catch the full interview with Drew Plitt tomorrow morning on our sister, sister show, Waking Up with Cardinal Weather. Newslink Indiana, along with the Daily News, brings you Week 9's High School Game of the Week. This Friday's matchup is between the New Palestine Dragons and the Delta Eagles. The Eagles come into this game with only one loss on the records and an undefeated streak at home. Delta's led by junior quarterback Brady Hunt. Hunt's racked up over 1,000 yards passing through the first eight weeks. The undefeated New Pal Dragons have a lot riding on this one, this being the last game of the regular season. A win means a perfect regular season. 
Delta and New Pal kick off at 7.30. Newslink Indiana will also be covering Miss Anua at Blackford game. That game is set to kick off at 7. Wow, a perfect record. That would be something. Yeah, a lot of football to be played this weekend. High school, college, it's going to be a busy weekend throwing the pigskin. All right, thanks, Colton. Find out how spooky, spooky season can get for a family in Iowa. Yes, and a dream come true for some. A new Airbnb you can rent next in Trending. Riding the bus is an easy thing to do. Last year, we carried 60,000 riders in the Ball State area. 50,000 of those were students. Anywhere you want to go, Mitz will take you there. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few who are in a shelter near you. Harlow. Oh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Cerulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Here's your sandwich, miss. Oh, thank you. And your burger. Awesome, thank you. And your bowl of boiling water, sir. Welcome back. Time now to take a look at what's trending. Joining us tonight is Newslink Indiana's Brittany Dobbins. Brittany, what do you have for us? Good evening, guys. Thank you. Well, spooky season is officially here, and for an Iowa family, spooky season literally hit home for them. The homeowner noticed blood coming from his sump pit in the basement, and two weeks later, the basement was covered in blood. So where is this blood coming from, and whose is it? Officials believe the cause is from a clogged drain line shared with their neighbors, a slaughterhouse and meat locker. Public Health and Department of Natural Resources officials are investigating the family is, is staying elsewhere while reportedly working with the meat lockers owners to resolve this bloody issue. Nobody wants to see that, smell that. I wouldn't want that for anybody to have that in their house. Is in staying somewhere else, toy maker Mattel has created a real Malibu Barbie dream house to celebrate Barbie's 60th anniversary. The life-size dream house is available to rent for only $60 a night on Airbnb. And one lucky fan and three friends can book a very special two-night stay. Bookings open on October 23rd, and the lucky winner will also get to visit some inspirational women and get a celebrity-style makeover that Barbie would approve. Be sure and let Ken know you've got other plans for this dreamy weekend. That sounds awesome. It sounds like a spring break trip in the works. Yeah, yeah and possibly an early uh, Christmas present, Mom. <laughs> yeah, a house you'd want to go to and a house you probably wouldn't want to go to. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. All right, Stephen, can you give us one final check at weather? Yes, here's an early Christmas present for you guys. Look at the weekend. Just look at it. With, ex <laughs> with the exception of the spy shower chance Saturday evening, it's going to be a beautiful weekend for Ball State Homecoming and just weekend in general to enjoy. Next big rain chance comes Monday. I would not rule out a strong thunderstorm Monday afternoon. Showers and storms, though. Have the umbrella ready for Monday and then a slight, small shower chance Tuesday, but we back off to around the 60 degree mark with more dry time by the middle of next week after Tuesday. So a great forecast coming up with the exception of Monday. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I cannot wait. All right, thanks guys. That's all tonight for Newslink Indiana. Be sure to tune in to Waking Up with Cardinal Weather tomorrow morning at 8 on the Facebook for the latest homecoming news. And don't forget to catch our bed race special tomorrow at noon live from Riverside.